Ladies and gentlemen, it is a big, dangerous, scary world out there. Here I am, al pie del cañón, folks. <laughs> Ready for everything, let's fix the world with our unpopular opinions. With our hundred humans, with our complete the news, I'm Rob Grams, and this is... The Bravo Show! <laughs> God, it's Friday. We survived. Oh my God, what a week, folks. What a week. Are you ready for the weekend? Are you ready for the weekend out there? I'll tell you what Probo is. I am. <laughs> This is officially Probo approved. Oh my God, ready to relax. But let me tell you something, guys. We have a big day full of exciting content ready for you here on Vaughn Radio. This morning with me, then we've got Fitz, then we've got Alberto, then we've got oh, all the way to the main event at 1.30, the lunchtime show, folks. Guys, if you're a fan of Kyle Miller, send him some messages. He's not feeling too well. And I think that's it. That's my, that's my friend obligation for the day. Now I can be an ass again. Hey, Natch, what are you planning for the weekend, sir? Nothing. Nothing. No birthdays. Uh, there is no birthdays. No, no, no. Oh, hallelujah. Nice, dude. So what, what, what is on the agenda? Netflix. I'm, I'm trying to watch the last episode. <gasps> of, uh, oh, so good. I, I need two hours and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's long. It is long. Yeah. yeah. I'm running up that hill. Oh, you know, I put Kate Bush on my, um, <laughs> on my morning walk playlist now. Uh, just in case. So yeah, just are... yeah, just in case there's a there's a demon chasing me, just to inspire me to run a little further. If I only could make a deal with God, oh, <laughs> tell you what, if you do, if you were to ask 16 year old me, hey, when you're in your forties, do you think you'll be listening to Kate Bush on the way to work? I think, I don't think I would have imagined that. What's on the What's on the menu for my weekend? Well, let me tell you, folks. Well, tonight, because the weekend starts now, right? Well, the weekend starts when I finish work. So tonight when I get home, I plan on passing out immediately and waking up on Saturday morning, okay? So what do I do Saturday morning? Let me tell you, folks. Let me tell you what I'm doing on Saturday. I'm going to see, I'm going to um, Mad Cool, the festival, Mad Cool Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh by the way, guys, you can join the show live on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. I see Lady Boy's in the chat and she's the only one. The only warrior today. The rest of you dirty lurkers, filthy, filthy lurkers just sat there in your armchairs like potatoes. Photosynthesis. I don't even know what you people do. Let me see your hands. I don't trust you. Okay, those you dirty lurkers out there who are just listening to the show. Shame on you. Lady Boy's in the chat. If you want to be in the chat too, you know, brush off the shackles of weirdness. Just being there like a voyeur. <laughs> But you need to join me on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian. So I will wake up on Saturday morning, Natch. I'm going to head over to the Ifema area. That's where it is, right? That's where, yeah, okay. And go to Mad Cool. Who am I going to see? I'm going to see the Pixies. Where is my mind? Oh, hey, been dying to meet you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, we're going to see Royal Blood. You may not know Royal Blood. Blood. They're not. They're quite an obscure band, but I'm a big fan. I've got at least two of their songs. What? Two? How can you fit Royal Blood songs on your morning um, morning walk to work playlist when you've got so much Kate Bush there? I don't know. I don't know. Having too much Bush is never a problem. <laughs> That one's for my Anglo folks. Um... So, Pixies, Royal Blood, Kings of Leon, is it, Lady Bo? The other one? Kings of, Le Kings of Leon, guys. No, you didn't hear me incorrectly. I'm going to see the Kings of Leon. I'm going to see Florence and the Machine. Oh, that's my Saturday. My Probo's weekend brought to you by not having children. <laughs> Sick of not having time? Try not having children. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, uh, so that's what, that's the whole day. That's the whole day. Eat junk festival food, have a few beers, listen to some m live music. Guys, if you are listening to the show right now, you're going to be anywhere near um, uh, Mad Cool. You see a guy with a black baseball cap on that says Probo on it. Please just completely ignore me. I'm off work. So 
I'd appreciate it if you just kept your distance. I'm joking. You come and say hello. You say, bro, bro, what's up? Nivalatho. If you say Nivalatho to me, you get a hug. If you say, what's up? You know, I'll just nod at you. I go, yeah, whatever. Hi. But if you say Nivalatho, I'm giving you a big, tight, big bear hug. <laughs> and we'll cheers a beer. We'll cheers with our beers and take, um, and take a selfie. So that's the, that's the, that's the deal, guys. You see me at, um, f- at Mad Cool on, um, on Saturday. You cheers. We che- if you want a hug, you say Nivalatho Probo. And I'll be like, oh, dude, come here. And we'll, we'll all stink and be covered in, um, dust. That's the beauty of a festival in Madrid. Um, people are on vacation and they are probably still sleeping, says Lady Bo. No, there's no excuse. You know, in, in most regards, lurkers are always sleeping. You know, those people who don't interact with the show, they just listen to it, mollify, you know? But you know when you're cooking in the kitchen? So imagine you're cooking like a turkey, okay? And you're stuffing it and the turkey's there on a wooden chopping block. Right, and in the background, you've got the TV. In this scenario, the lurker is the turkey. That's what you basically are. You do, you have no, you, you're offering no, you're offering, you, you, you build, you build, you put nothing into the content. Nothing. Not like Lady Bo and Juan Connor, who are all here. How are you doing, guys? We, well, what we've got in the show for you today, we've got some tasty, tasty complete the news things. Um, really, really good ones. We have 100 humans, which is, again, probably one of the best topics we've done so far. And we have a really, really juicy, unpopular opinion. I didn't even prepare. Usually I come with um, facts and figures and statistics. Today, no. Today, no. Today's um, uh, unpopular opinion, Natch. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I think I saw it this morning. Oh, it's a hot one. It's a hot one. There's quite a lot of irony in this. And we'll get into it in a bit. So, yeah, what do I do after um, after Saturday? Well, I get home Saturday and we go to bed, Lady Bo and I. We go straight to bed. We wake up with a hangover, with a terrible, terrible hangover. <laughs> so we feel sorry for ourselves until at least two in the afternoon. And then I get back to work. <laughs> and I have my class with Gandalf. I do some apt tutoring. And um, prepare some things. You know, I want to make clips of the funny sections from um, from our show, Nat, from the Probo show. I want to do it. I want to post some things on social media. That's my um, and that's my weekend, folks. Brought to you by not having children. You sick of not being able to watch the fight finale of Stranger Things? Try not having children. <laughs> Proud sponsors of the Probo show. <laughs> hey, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm teasing, guys. I know a bunch of you are out there right now, and you know, you may be even sat with your children right now, taking them to school, feeling a little bit awkward. I don't care. Your tears are delicious. Bottle them up, send them to the studio. Mm, and your anger, it only makes me more powerful, guys. It only makes me more powerful. Guys, let's go to an unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. It's a good one. It's a good one today. So today's unpopular opinion um, is in regards to social media. Social media. Redes sociales. Oh, I don't get um, an evil author for that one. I don't deserve it. I've worked in marketing. If I couldn't say redes sociales. <laughs> you know. So, ready sociales. The, um, the, the topic was, or the sentence was, social media does more harm than good. Así que daña más que cura. Is that a good way to say it? Or daña más que... How would you say that, Natch? Oh! Like that. Really? Really? Did I... Did, did I... Yeah, that's very refined. Oh! Daña is like very... Oh! Cold. <laughs> I just need a second. I need a second. This is what Richard Vaughn feels like every second of every day. I just need a second just to let that... Yeah, the colloquial way would be hace más daño que pero daña es All right. well you know I'm on the radio I'm trying to be a refined gentleman here look at me with my in my suit and tie if you want to see that yourself guys go to twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian yes it's not just a radio show as if a radio show wasn't enough no you can participate live on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian barra professional bohemian it's that easy 
Let's see, the chat is coming to life. You want to spread yourself out, Rob? Always, Bridge. Always. I'm like butter that has been left out of the refrigerator. And I'm ready to be spread, folks. You know, what? what is that with... Like, I used to have a cold war with my cleaning lady, Sally. She would... I would leave the butter... La mantequilla, right? The butter. I know I have a strange accent. Deal with it, folks. It's early. This is a workout for your brain. So I used to leave the butter outside of the fridge. Como Dios manda. <laughs> it has to be outside the fridge. Otherwise, you can't, you can't spread the damn stuff. So I would, like, I would put the butter in the fridge. Uh, I would take it out of the fridge so I could spread it. Sally, every morning, well, not every morning. Once a week, <laughs> we put it back inside the fridge, and then I'd forget. I'd forget to take it back out again, and there was at least one morning every week where I couldn't eat toast. Spaniards, a butter dish. It's, it was, it's been invented already. All you need to is, do is import some. You know, look, let's you know, let's get on Alibaba.com and just import a bunch of but, butter dishes. It's a life changer, guys. Trust me. Trust me. Am I already written about this, says the bridge. Oh, bridge, I missed it. I missed it. Hi, guys. Bea Urbanos is here. Welcome, Bea. Good morning. Good morning. Danya Hams. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Ooh. You know, I felt I earned that nivel, I thought. That's why I just had to take a moment away from the unpopular opinion just to let it. Let it sink in. Danya Maskekura, no, guys? <clears throat> anyway, social media. <laughs> it does more harm than good. Is that a true statement or a false statement? Think social media does more harm than good? What do you think, Natch? For me, it's true. It does It does more harm than, yeah. than good. If you had said it's 100% harmful, I would say no. Yeah, yeah. But this has more harm than... Yeah. It I does. Agree. Okay, cool. I would, um, and I imagine you would expect a lot of people to agree with you. So, you know, I've got an uphill argument today. I've got an uphill I'm running up that hill. Go on, Eddie, play that guitar, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've got an uphill struggle. I imagine a lot of people agree with that statement that social media is... Um, is damaging to society. We've seen, and we hear a lot of news stories, scary news stories. We've seen, um, we've seen social media networks, um, quite often, quite often making pernicious and, and dangerous decisions that affect our privacy and our mental health. We've seen a lot of news stories, but let's get into this, right? Social media, does it do more harm than good? Guys, if you want to participate in this poll, go to twitter.com. Okay, and my my handle, my name there is arroba p r o b o h probo. Or you go to Instagram on my story, arroba professional bohemian. Make your voice heard um, and um, interact with the, one of the two poles there. Um, Anna Martin Llorente. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, Anna Martin Llorente. Welcome, Anna. Is this Anna as in, as in Yago's mum? I hope so. If, you, if that's you, Anna, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, hams, but I cannot live without it, says um, uh, says Bear. Yes, it is. Wicked. Awesome. This is my morning show. Welcome, welcome. I do not agree, says the bridge. She thinks it does more good than harm. Cura mas que daña. Really? The agility the boy speaks Spanish is crazy. Uh, <laughs> So, okay, let's get into this. The irony here is that I both posted both of those polls where? I didn't post it on a corcho outside your office building, did I? I didn't post it, you know, in your in your local bar. I posted it on Instagram and Twitter. And guess what, folks? Those two things are social media sites. You know, most of the web pages you interact with, believe it or not, I probably have an element of social media or sociality or gamification applied to them, which are two of the fundamental pillars of, of social media, right? So, um, uh, for example, you enjoy YouTube. YouTube, in its essence, is a social media site, okay? Comments, people follow you, you follow them, you interact with their content, they interact with yours. Essentially, it's social media. You can argue that with me, and it's okay. You're allowed to be wrong. 
<laughs> You're allowed to be wrong, folks. Um, <laughs> um, Reddit. I don't know. Reddit isn't that big in Spain. I think it's starting to... I think it's starting to get bigger in Spain. Um, but it's not so big now. It's not so big now. Um, off to the camp now. Both Leo and Yago are attending. Hit you soon. Okay, see you later, Anna. Um, and hello, Yago. Woo! Yago is um, an intellectual giant, and I look forward to having him in the studio one day. You'll meet Yago soon, folks. Uh, the bridge. It's our attitude towards everything in life. What harms us is not social media. It's our attitude towards everything in life. Okay, Bridge. I like that. I like that. I'm going to keep on arguing the positives before I go into the negatives. But I like that. Keep on keep on um, commenting. Um, so, yeah, we posted the poll on social media. Um, there are a lot of a lot of the websites you enjoy and interact with are actually social media sites. Um, I made the argument for YouTube. YouTube is the second. Before you say, well, YouTube, I don't use it that much. YouTube is the second most most popular search engine in the world. Let that sink in, guys. The second most popular search engine in the world, and YouTube only searches within its own site. That is how heavily trafficked YouTube is. And yes, it is a social media. It's, I mean, I know most of us interact with it just as a pure user basis, just to enjoy the content. But in its essence, even from when it started, and even now, even though it's a little harder to access those those parts, it, may, it remains a social media. And yeah, we hear a lot of um, we hear a lot of dangerous news. We all have um, we've all heard a lot of horror stories. But don't we hear a lot of dangerous news and horror stories about everything in life, folks? The news would make you believe that you stand outside and you're going to get stung by some Nazi killer bees and uh, and immediately die of COVID, right? <laughs> that's what people want you to believe. That's what the that's what that's the kind of clickbait ta- um, articles that are pushed um, on online. Okay, now let's separate and let's also separate a little bit. What is social media from the businesses that run these social media sites? Okay, back in the beginning, social media. Now we're going to go into a little bit of a shade of grey before we get into the dark. Okay, back in the day when social media was truly democratic, when you followed someone and you could see a hundred percent of their posts, and it was about friends, it was about making a connection. Like if those of you who are old enough will remember MySpace before before even Facebook. Um, and Facebook existed basically as a photo storage site where you could um, tag your friends, basically. You had a wall. People, uh, it was it's slow to adopt Facebook because people loved um, MySpace because they could personalize their page. I don't know if you remember that. So what happened? Well, Facebook, um, uh, in order to become profitable, started with an advertising model. And slowly but surely, a lot of the, um, a lot of the ease in which you could access the people you followed and, and the pages you followed, the companies you followed, a lot of the access to their posts started to be reduced. For example, if you post, if you have a friend, if you have a bar or a, or a band or, um, a, or a business and you post on your business's page, I think it's about eight, between eight and 20% of the people who follow you will see that post, not the full hundred. Okay, you know, what have they done? Well, the whole idea of boosting your post. Do you want all your followers to see this? Of course I do. But now something that should be out of the box is a matter of be, of paying, right? So what what is the economy of, um, uh, of the future, folks? A lot of people will tell you it's information. I will argue that's not the case. I don't think the economy of the future. I don't think this is the information age. I think this, this is the age of human attention. Every company... Every business, if you're on the internet, your job is to capture attention, okay? And I mean that from Netflix to CNN to Huffington Post, okay? Netflix wants you to stay on Netflix, go there, watch all their things, not leave, as does Instagram. You know, have you ever wondered why it's so difficult to post a link on Instagram? It's because Instagram wants to keep you inside Instagram. Facebook wants to keep you in Facebook. Twitter wants to keep you in Twitter. Okay, and it's almost turned into this game, this pernicious game of let's capture people's attention and not let them out. 
you know? And that is a, basically a financial decision. So not only do they keep us within their ecosystem, they will, um, they will actively restrict things that an algorithm or content that an algorithm that they use suggests that we will interact with on their site. Okay, let's make the, um, uh, let's make the, the case for YouTube. YouTube is probably one of the worst at this. If you search for one video saying flat earth theory <laughs> or, or I don't know, JFK assassination, moon landing is fake. For the next month, your recommended videos will be flat earth, JFK assassination, or, you know, people, it's not actively in the interest of any social media site to offer you something, to gamble at offering you something you may or may not be interested in. You know what I mean? Even if it's good for you. Now, like I said before, I'm, um, uh, I'm a socialist at heart until it's time to pay my taxes. <laughs> Like, and it does me good. And I read a lot of conservative, like, believe it or not, The Hill is one of my favorite publications. And even though they hated Donald Trump, they are a conservative um, uh, news outlet. Um, and it does me good to read that point of view. But you know what Facebook won't, won't give me? They won't give me articles from The Hill. They'll give me articles from NBC, Huffington Post. Because they want to appeal to my lizard brain that doesn't want to educate itself. That just wants to be told, good boy, you're a cleverest boy. Good boy for you. You're a special little snowflake. And I know I'm not a special little snowflake. I know how stupid I am. We could all benefit from knowing how stupid we all are. We're all idiots. All of us. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a, that's a very pernicious side. And that is the business side of Facebook. This, this war that exists over our attention. And uh, yeah, I'm not just about talking about social media. I'm talking about online in general. Yeah, there was a there was a block of maybe ten years there where it was all about collecting our information. But now, that information is used against us to keep and maintain our attention. Um, what is this? Or oh, monkeypox? Says the uh, the bridge. Min is here. Just trust the algorithm, Rob. Everyone agrees with you exactly. Now they call those social media bubbles where you get into this bubble and all you receive is news from like minds. And all that does is is seek to um, to push us further apart, you know? The, when we started the concept of this show, it was about, you know, everybody you, you, uniting around me being a bad guy, <laughs> telling you things you didn't want to hear. For example, you're all idiots. Me included, we're all idiots, you know? And we need to actively be shown things and look at things that are in contrary to our current beliefs because asking questions is one of the most fundamental points of learning right if you don't ask questions i mean look at the look how um, how much importance fitz puts on the uh, um, mastering the interrogative um, section he does it on every single show why because asking questions is fundamental to communication and you can't ask questions if you're only hearing one point of view so another negative of social media there. What's another one? Well, let's call this confirmation bias to a certain degree. We look at our lives through the lens of the people that are around us, right? We do that. It's unavoidable. Now, back in the day, what would that be? That would probably be the matriarch or patriarch in the house, outside in their garden, speaking to their neighbours, you know, oh, you got a new TV set. That's nice. Oh, look at that. You've mowed the lawn. How did you get your lawn so lush? That was our access or uh, coffee, uh, water cooler conversations at work. We're going to Marbella this year. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I went to Greece. I was great. You know, that was, um, that was what we, but you know, it was tempered always by reality. It's always tempered by reality when it's face to face communication. You know what I mean? It's not all positive, positive, positive. When you look at anyone's Facebook timeline, anyone's Instagram timeline, oh my God, these people are going on vacation every 10 seconds. They've got their feet in the sand. Cute Instagram. Hey, woke up like this. No makeup. You know what I mean? No one is, you know what I mean? No one is that beautiful and happy all the time. No one. I was looking for, I'm doing this project on my personal streams in the evening. Um, 
and I don't know why, but we're working on a photo by Kate Blanchett. Let me tell you something. No, not Kate Blanchett. What's her name? Katie something. Really beautiful, famous actress. Let me tell you something, guys. This Kate Beckinsdale. Kate Beckinsdale poos. I don't think you know that, but she does. She poos. She gets depressed. You know? She argues with a boyfriend. You know what I mean? Sometimes she's got she wakes up with a gran on her face. You know what I mean? These are things, this is reality, but it's not reality that's shared with us on social media. Okay, we're going to get back to this unpopular opinion. What? In the next section of the show, we're also going to complete the news and look at our hundred humans. Guys, I'm having a whale of a time today, and I will see you in four short minutes. See you soon, guys. Hey, guys. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash professional bohemian. There you'll find VODs of the episodes as they are recorded live, blogs, vlogs, and behind-the-scenes content. If you'd like to watch the show live, you can do so on twitch.tv forward slash professional bohemian, and you can participate in the polls we use in the show on Instagram at professional bohemian or Twitter at probo, P-R-O-B-O-H. Okay, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. You're listening to the Probo Show here on Vaughn Radio. It's home where it lives. How are you doing, guys? Um, yeah, before the break, we were talking about um, our unpopular opinion today, which is social media. It, does it do more harm than good? Is that a true statement or a false statement? Social media, more harm than good. Um, later on, we're going to go into 100 humans and, um, and complete the news. We've got some tasty ones today. Probably some of my favorites that we've done so far. But before that, we need to wrap up today's um, unpopular opinion. Um, yeah, where do I stand on social media? We'll get into that. We'll get into that. I mean, but, you know, we, we tend to sway towards the negatives. And the, and the negatives, there are many. You know what I mean? We see, I, before the break, I was talking about how we get a lens, a false, a distorted lens into other people's lives, you know? And it's, and it's just plain not true. I look at my own, I look at my own Instagram and it makes me sick. Like, <laughs> just loads of photos of me and my girlfriend in beautiful locations, kissing. Dude, come on, gross. My life isn't like that. You know, most of the time we're both, like, in the summer, we're both sweating in the terrace in our underwear. You know, smoking cigarettes, complaining about how warm it is. But there's no Instagram photos of that. That's literally the majority of our time together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's um, that's one of the, the harsh realities of social media. You know? Um, but there, it's done several good things. What did we mention? Um, the fact that, hey, we're interacting right now. The, the poll for this. Ooh, kissing a girl, says Min. I know, gross. Gross. And welcome to the chat. By the way, guys, if you want to interact with the show, the real interactive sections are coming right now, so it's important you go to twitch.tv barra, or forward slash, professional bohemian. Bohemio professional. Todo una palabra. You, you, you know what I mean? You stick it in there and, and you'll find me. Um, so, yeah. Um, the positive sides, the positive sides, like what I posted, I didn't post this on the M30 circular in Madrid and you all had to stop in your car and tick a box. No, I posted it on social media and you all voted there. You have a voice on social media that you never had before. You know, that's a bit of a positive and a negative because most people <laughs> shouldn't have a voice. I mean, probably me included, but there you go. But here you go. Yeah. You have a voice on social media. It connects us. Now, we are talking right now, me and Min. Min has been a follower of my stream for, wow, I don't know, since 2016, 17, Min, 18 maybe. A lot of years you've been following me creating content. You, We would have never discovered each other and become friends if, um, uh, you know, if I was just stuck in a normal terrestrial analog media. It's the, it's the benefits that social media bring us that have brought us together. It's um, let's just round it up to roughly twenty years. Says me. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, Natch, can we get a little bit of background music? I can just hear my own heart beat here. It makes me <laughs> it makes me angry. Too much coffee, guys. What can I do? <laughs> um. So yeah, 
um, apart from and apart from giving us all a voice and connecting us, discovering connections, meeting people you would have never met before, it helps us then further maintain those connections. You know, I'm not talking to my mum via carrier pigeon or via smoke signals. I speak to my mum on WhatsApp, which yes has elements of a social media, even though it's a messaging platform. Thanks to stories and things like that, being able to share. Yeah. It's, um, I talk to my mum via social media and she lives in England. I talk to all my family that way. I talk to most of my friends that way, even the ones I see in real life. Not only does it help us make connections, it creates connections. It's democratized entertainment. Look at the platform we're streaming on right now. Twitch. Twitch.tv. You know what I mean? There are many Twitch channels that get more viewers than terrestrial television channels. You know, here in Spain, eBay is a big one. You know, um, uh, Ninja, PewDiePie, all people who create content and started in their homes, whether it be playing video games or whatever it, it is that is their speciality. It's democratized media, taking it out of the hands of, um, uh, of the big production companies and the big channels and putting it in the hands of individuals and users. It's also made media, um, business more accessible to people. Like the ex exorbitant marketing budgets of the past. Um, los presupuestos de marketing. And bajado. Algo. Why? We talk about the negative side of, um, of people stealing our data. But if you're a small business owner, the insights that Facebook has, allowing you to really pinpoint people who may be interested in your content or your whatever it is you're trying to sell, whether it be a product or service, is absolutely invaluable. It's for fun and games to let people meet and voice themselves until it's extremists. True story, yeah. We should get into this. One day we'll do the popular, unpopular opinion of um, freedom of speech. Is it worth it? <laughs> I should not because they made me take my show away from me. Yeah, too, too much freedom of speech for Rob. <laughs> Very well, thanks. How about you? The dog is still driving me crazy. Yeah, we're having problems with the dogs, I mean, They're trying to dig their way out of our house. Um, they must have learned that from Rob. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, so, my opinion. Well, let's go to um, Natch, first of all. Natch is, is, is in the middle of recording. Sorry, man. Last interruption. Um, what do you think? What do you think the, the results were? True, right? I think true has won. By a big margin, by a small margin. By a big mar margin. Yeah, it has. By a massive margin. People, more, 84% of people on um, Instagram, uh, on Twitter, sorry, believe that um, social media is more damaging than it is good. And 79% on Instagram. 79% of people. Now, what's my take on this? Um, I think with most things in life, you know, too much is, you know, too much is a, is a frase hecha. Demasiado, right? If you drink too much water, it's bad for you. Yeah, because too much of anything is bad for you. That's why we have a phrase like too much. <laughs> you know, just enough is a good thing. You know, and I know it's very addicting. It's very addictive. You see kids, like I, I read a report that in the US, between the ages of 14 and 18, kids will spend an average of, get this, nine hours on social media. That's crazy to me. It's addictive. I think the, in in cases like that, it's um we we blame the individual companies, but perhaps it's an educational problem. You know, I know, I know, I know. I don't like, you know, I don't like to kind of make the argument for free market capitalism outside of tax time. <laughs> but our educational system, our education system has not changed since the industrial revolution. So maybe it's time We started teaching kids about how the media manipulates us. Just in the nature of the media, you watch a new story, even a well-balanced one, it's written with a narrative. Okay. Um, there's no such thing as too much cheese, though, says Moon. <laughs> True story. The big CEOs, digital gurus from Silicon Valley, educate their children about without screens. I think that tells us all. Yeah, exactly. So the education system here hasn't caught up with um, with the technology, and it really needs to quickly. So you know, a lot of these problems, like um, poor body image because of influencers, the influencers on social media, or kids getting addictive 
are addicted to the to these platforms. It's a question of education and understanding how the platforms work in order to keep you there. And once you understand something, it becomes a lot less problematic, you know? Um, so I think it's a question of education. Does it have its downsides? It certainly does. But do they outweigh the good sides? Because that's the question, right? And I think, honestly, guys, I'm, you're not going to agree with me here, but I honestly think there are more positives to being connected, to the access to becoming a business person, to having your voice heard. I mean, there are a lot of negatives to that too. I mean, we could make the whole show about arguing this. But I honestly think there are a lot more positives to social media than there are negatives. And I think the negatives that exist, exist because we are humans and we are dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, greed, you know? The same thing with politics. What's politics? What has politics ever done for us? Fix our roads, you know, build hospitals, pay for doctors, pay for nurses. You know, there's a few things. Yeah, but they're all greedy and liars. Also true. They're all greedy and liars. True, true story. You know what I mean? The same thing with social media. It does. It, it is it connected us in a way like we've never had before. But the but human greed and um, uh, and the algorithms that suggest content to us are very pernicious and very dangerous. I can't. Um, I can't. I can't disagree with that point, but I think overall it's done more good than it has bad. But that's just my opinion, eh, folks? And um, uh, and you can think it's wrong, and I will not shed a tear. I will still sleep like a little bald baby tonight because, you know, that's fine. You shouldn't care. Um, educational problems in the U.S. sound very unbelievable to me, says Min. They just need to change the algorithm and remove their chances of getting completely stuck into any tiny bubble. Yeah, exactly. Well, wow, that would be a massive change if YouTube and Facebook just improved their, their algorithms, you know, made it less. But you see, it's not in their interest to do so because um, in order to sell advertising, they need to keep people on the platform. They need to keep that attention there. So it's not in there. Their business model is flawed for society. Great for business, but flawed for society. But I still think the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, I've seen people... Yes, Rob, you just summed up my opinion on the on the pick. Perfect. Um, I've seen the... Uh, I've seen people argue to remove block options so you can't remove opinions you don't agree with. Ooh, wow, that would be an interesting thing. That would be an interesting thing. Okay, um, I think it's time. It's, oh, it's ten past nine, guys. We've only got 20 minutes left together. Let's go to 100 humans. Oh, my God. It was a long walk to work, guys. Five hours across snow-capped mountains and through river valleys. Oh, that's why my um, playlist is so long. Listening, listening to Kate Bush as you're walking up a mountain peak, guys. I'm running up that hill. Oh, insp inspiring. <laughs> I read somewhere that Kate Bush made, has made an extra $2 million because of Stranger Things using her song and the popularity it's getting. Anyway, um, so, 100 humans, a long walk, snow snow-capped mountains, river valleys. I encountered 100 humans today. 100 humans. And I asked them a very important question. I asked them to name an accent. To name an accent that Americans consider sexy. To name an accent that Americans consider sexy. Nombre, nombra un acento que los Estados Unidos consideran sexys. Okay. So, name an accent that Americans find sexy all right so that's your job guys i am in possession of the of the seven most popular answers and i'm looking for your opinions um i'm not going to ask natch because poor guy's <laughs> trying to do a million things over there no no you can ask yeah yeah ah, ah you take it ah elena's here from junior to take all the things hi elena <laughs> how are you doing um you'll recognize elena from fitz's show in the morning so um what do you think natch What's your opinion? I'm going to say Spanish. You think Spanish? <laughs> Why not? Lady Boss says Spanish too. Is it there though? Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes, yes. 
It's there, guys. Well done, well done. It's there. 17 of the 100 humans said Spanish. I asked them to name an accent that Americans consider sexy. Name an accent, accent that Americans consider sexy. Min and, um, and the bridge both say French. They both say French. Oh, hello, American. French. But is it there? Yes, it is. French is there. Well done, my friends. Well done. Okay, more. Um, let's see. JC says Russian. Russian. I don't know. Complicated history there, JC. The complicated history between the US and Russia. Is it there? It is not. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Oh, Russian is not there. Um, Min, Israeli is a beautiful accent, but I don't think it's big enough for people to name it. But is it? I am I am in possession of the facts, Min. Is Israeli there? No, it's not. Sadly, it is not. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. We're going to have to go for clues soon. You guys are doing a terrible job. So, name an accent Americans consider sexy. Nombra un acento que los Estados Unidos consideran sexy. I know, my pronunciation isn't all that. You know, cry me a river, I don't care. <laughs> um, okay, where are we? Uh, Southern. The Southern American accent Americans find sexy. Is it there? That's from the bridge. It is there. It is there. Well done, Bridge. Well done. It is the fifth most popular answer. The Southern American accent is there. Four of the hundred humans said the Southern American accent is sexy. JC says Mandarin Chinese is the Chinese accent. It's a very sexy accent for me. You know the first Spanish I learned? This is not a joke. It was in a slight Chinese, it was with a slight Chinese accent because of a lot of the vocabulary I learned was in the, in the local corner shop, Los Chinos. Well, and uh, like, I, and I'd be asking for things and she'd tell me what, how to say it. So a ton of words I used to say in a Chinese accent and people laughed at me and I didn't understand why. And then one day Fernando Valgan said, you speak with a t Chinese accent. True story. Completely true story. Is it there? Mandarin Chinese, it is not there. I am sorry. Blah, blah, blah. But good answer, though. Mince. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. JC is do just going on a world tour, he is. <laughs> he said, uh, Min says, posh English. Is a British accent there? Do Americans find the British accent sexy? They do. It's there. The fourth most popular answer. Well done, Min. 17, 17 of the 100 humans said the, the Americans find the British accent sexy. There's still one of the top ones. No one's gotten the second most popular. Surprising to me. Um, what, have you, what are you missing? Oof, you're missing a few, actually. Okay, do we do, do, we go, on, um, uh, do we go on a little clue um, fetish? Do we go cluing? Okay, here's one. I'm going to give you a clue. Uh, yeah, that's a good clue. Okay, clue only for the warriors. What's this one? Only for the people watching the screen. What does this mean? What what nationality is this? I'm not being racist. <laughs> what do you think? What nationality do you think when I when I do this with my hand? Okay, I'm sorry for the people on the radio. Oh, um, Min already said it. Ah, did Min already say this one? Min says Italian. Is it there? It is there with 20 of the 100 humans saying Italian. Uh, Min says, I love that posh British. Um, I love the, the, I love that posh British. He's only the one spot above Southern US English. Yeah, it is. It is. But, you know, it's there. We, we we represent. 
I already talked about the pizzas twice now. Sorry, man. Sorry. It's difficult to keep up with the chat. Okay, so you've got the top answers. There are still a few to go. Okay, um, if I say Mr. Fitzgerald, if I say Mr. Fitzgerald, what are you thinking? <laughs> Irish says Ladyboy, it is there. Three of the 100 humans, the seventh most popular answer. And there's just, okay, there's just one more to get. There is just one more to get, guys. Um, thank you, Bridge Italian. It was there. It was there. Uh, I think Min said it first. Okay, last one. It's the sixth most popular. If I say, okay, we're going, I'm going to go inside baseball. You need to be um, a fan of the lunchtime show. If I say Miss Sasha Hayes, and I ask you which accent does um, uh, do Americans find sexy? <laughs> Um, Min says, clearly Americans don't interact with Irish people enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It can be quite sexy, can't it, the Irish accent? I don't know. I've never thought about it. Because all my Irish friends have been male. <laughs> um, Lady Bo and Min both say Australia. And folks, it is there. The sixth most popular answer with three of the hundred humans. Okay, let's go through those in order. I asked a hundred humans to name, to name an accent that Americans find sexy. Nombra, nombra un acento que los Estados, Estadounidenses, wah, consider unsexy. My God, that was a little workout for my tongue, guys. You're welcome, Lady Bo. <laughs> okay, and, um, and they said in seventh place, Irish. With three of the hundred humans. In sixth place, Australian. With three again. I don't know. It was a tie, I guess. In um, uh, in fifth place, the southern US accent with four. Four of the hundred humans. In fourth place, British. Bl bloody right. British accent is best. Ooh, we got, we've got um, a piece of news about Boris. I've got three pieces of news. I don't think we're going to get time to do them all. Unless we go quickly. Okay, Spanish was in third place with 17 of the 100 humans. Italian in second with 20 of the 100 humans. And French first with 34 of the 100 humans. Guys, let's go to complete the news. Complete the news! I'll tell you what, I've got, um, I've got a choice here, Nat. You can choose the complete the news you want. Okay? Do you want... Um, do you want cannibalism, Boris Johnson, or Quentin Tarantino? Always Boris. Always Boris. Okay, let's go, Boris. Okay. Guys, complete the news. This is how it works. We have three news stories. We have three news stories, but they have essential information left out. And I need your help to complete the news. So here we go. Here's the first one. A wax figure. Okay, so wax, thera. Like you, like you would see in the, um, uh, in the Museo de Thera, right? We have Madame Tussauds in the UK, which is um, a wax museum. So you see these lifelike figures made out of wax. Okay, here we go. A wax figure of Bojo, Boris Johnson, appeared outside blank. Woo! as the Prime Minister resigned as the Conservative leader. A wax figure of Boris Johnson appeared outside blank as the Prime Minister resigned as Tory leader. Okay, here we go. Here are your options. Is it... Is it A, Peppa Pig World? Is it A, Peppa Pig World? A wax figure of Boris Johnson appeared outside Peppa Pig World as the Tory minister resigned? Is it B, Party City, which is um, a shop in England where you buy, like, decorations and things like that? Party City. So Boris, a wax figure of Boris Johnson appeared outside Party City as the Prime Minister resigned, or outside the Job Centre. Now, the Job Centre in... I don't know how you say this in, in Spanish, actually. When you're unemployed and you go to sign up for your benefits and you also search for jobs and things, what do you call that? Here it's uh, INEM or Oficina del Paro. 
La Oficina del Paro. So, is it outside La Oficina, de, La Oficina del Paro, the job center? So, is it A, Peppa Pig World, B, Party City, or C, the job center? A wax figure of Boris Johnson appeared outside blank as the Prime Minister resigned as Tory leader. Um, Lady Bo says, um, uh, a, which is Peppa Pig World. Hey, Peppa Pig World, there's a very good place to be. I like Peppa Pig World very much. Um, Min says Job Center would be peak British humor, but he's also a pig. You have to pick one of the three, Min. You have to pick one of the three. Um, what do you think, Natch? What do you think? I'm going to say C. You're going to say C, the Job Center. El Oficina del Paro. Okay, the Job Center. Okay, I can see how it, well I, I can see Min is gonna sit on the fence. Boo. Uh, okay, he'll do C, which is the job center. Okay. So you and Natch say C. Lady Boss says A. The bridge isn't quick enough. Let's get a dr drum roll, please. A wax figure of Boris Johnson appeared outside a job center as the pr as the Prime Minister resigned as Tory leader. Members of the public um, posed with a waxwork created by Madame Two Swords in Blackpool, which is our Museo de Terra, that has been positioned outside the job centre plus in the resort. Oh my gods! Oh my gods! We only we only stayed um, we only had time for one in the end. Maybe I'll save those two for next week because um, I had some good ones there, folks. Oh my god! It's been a it's been a great week of the Probo Show. We did Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Next week, I think Richard's in again on Wednesday with another two hour two hour live show. So don't miss that. I'll be back on Monday with more Probo Show madness. I'll be back on this channel with some art on that day too, and then also this afternoon on the Rob and Andy Show channel, I'll be here with the main event, the lunchtime show, guys. I've had a wonderful time. A lot of things you could be doing on this Friday morning but instead of doing those things you are here with me and it means the absolute world guys I will see you later